Oh my gosh, I actually can't see. Wow. Whatever. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Devani and today I'm gonna talk about books. That whole series that I did last year um, that I called Monthly Reads, I'm gonna rename it now to Dev's Bookshelf because that just goes, that just coincides with my Bookstagram account and it just makes more sense. So welcome to Dev's Bookshelf. Before I get started in this video, please hit that like and subscribe button and let's talk about books. All right, so last year I did a lot of like monthly reads. Like what did I read this month? Um, and oh my gosh, okay, blue light glasses, fabulous. Um, but I literally can't see unless I'm looking at a blue light. By the time the end of January rolled around, I only read four books. Um, and that's like the end of January, January 31st. By the time I would have recorded the video, I probably did two. So I decided let's skip January and go into February and then when I wanted to record this, I still only read two books. Um, my last book that I finished reading for February was about 20 minutes ago. So I pushed this to the very end as late as possible that I could record to get this in on time for the last Monday of February. So here we are, new year, new book goal. So as of right now, my 2021 book goal is to read 65 books. I don't know how, I guess I have to read about five books a month to stay on track. As of right now, Goodreads says I'm on track, but I don't think so. I've only read eight books so far for the year. I am gonna start another one after this video though, so we might be at nine before the last day of February. Anyways, we're gonna combine January and February's books. I'm gonna let you know everything that I read, how I felt about them, what my rating was, and if I recommend them. So, so the first book I read this year, I guess, was After I Do by Taylor Jenkins Reid. At the end of last year, in the beginning of this year, I was on a Taylor Jenkins Reid kick. Um, if you haven't read any of her books, you're missing out. She's great, love her. Last year, at the very end of the year, like the last three weeks of December, I read two, two of her books, and the third one just rolled over into New Year's, so I think I read it January 1st and 2nd. Loved all her books that I've read so far. Um, I recommend everything of hers that I read so far. Uh, the Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, Maybe in Another Life, After I Do, The Evidence of the Affair. That one's probably the shortest book I've ever read. I finished it in 25 minutes. All of them. So if you're not reading Taylor Jenkins Read, recommend it. I don't even know where for you to start because they're all so good. Actually, I do know. Start with Evelyn Hugo. You won't regret it. But this one, After I Do, I gave it a five out of five rating. The premise of the story is a couple, they've been married for a while and they just get into that marriage rut. And I mean, if you're married, you get it. You get into that marriage rut where it's just like, sometimes it's just easier not to say anything at all to avoid a fight or it's easier just to go along with the other person. Um, but I think in true Taylor Jenkins Reid format, everything is so, so real, so real life and relatable. So these two characters, like they, they fall out of love, but do they? It's just, they're in that rut, like I'm doing things for you that I don't wanna do, but I'm secretly resenting it, but not saying it. And I mean, I think a lot of relationships and marriages go through that anyway. So if you read it, if you've been married, you're in a relationship, whatever, you get it. And you can totally relate to these two characters. Um, but they decided to take a year off of their relationship and say, we're gonna give each other a break. Like we've fallen out of love. If we fall back in love in the year, we're meant to be. And if not, well, that's meant to be too. So um, it was a roller coaster. I really related with the story. Um, just even in my own relationship, like I could see a lot of things where you just let things go and don't say it and don't, try not to make a big deal about the little things, but I loved it. I love the way that the author writes. I love the story. It's so relatable. I think I cried uh, for two reasons. One, the writer's just so great and I think I've cried in every book of hers that I've read. And two, um, January was emotional. So yeah, but I recommend it. Five out of five stars on Goodreads. Highly recommend it. After you're done reading, after I do, pick up another, TJR book. You won't regret it. 
The second book I read this month was City of Girls. Um, didn't know anything about it. It's by Elizabeth Gilbert. I don't know you. I don't know this book. But Amazon Daily Deals had it for probably $3.99. And the cover was pretty. And don't judge a book by its cover, um, but I do. And this cover was really pretty. And yeah, so I got the book, four bucks. It was good, but it took me forever to read it for no reason. Like I, I enjoyed the book. It, it, it kept me engaged. It's just, I didn't feel like reading. So it took me a really long time to read it. It took me a solid like 10 days to finish it, which um, based on my reading schedule is a really long time. And I think one of the problems were, was the chapters were really long. Um, if you're reading it in a physical book, I probably would have put that book down. It was a lot of pages just to get from, you know, A to B. It was a good like 30 pages. It was extremely long. On the Kindle, I just read faster. Like the pages just go by and it felt long. So if it feels long on the Kindle, it's real long on paper. Either way, good story. Like immediately after I rated it a four. Um, I think I'd still stick with that four to five stars. It was good. It just, it took a long time to get anywhere. And up, oh, apparently this author wrote Eat, Pray, Love, um, which is just a book that I won't read for no reason other than it was really popular and really trendy and everyone else wanted to read it, so I don't want to. Um, but if you read Eat, Pray, Love, like this might be right up your alley. It's a lot of glamor and sex and adventure and um, like low key feminism, I guess. But there's just a lot of character and you really got to know everybody. Um, and it's really good. I liked it. Like even thinking back on it now as I'm talking to you guys, it was a good book. I'm totally downplaying it. Just give yourself some time. If you don't like long books, don't recommend. Scandal, regret, glamor, theater. I recommend. So the third book I read, we're still in January, was Bridgerton. The first Bridgerton book. Um, you must be living under a hole if you made it through January 2021 without hearing of Bridgerton. You might not have watched it because A, that's a lot of sex, a lot of nudity and a lot of, yeah. And two, um, it just doesn't look interesting if you just start it, but it is if you can get past the, you know, not safe for work aspect. Don't watch it with your mom. I liked the show. Um, I started watching it probably like one of the first couple days when it came out on Netflix. And it's not one of those shows that you can get into when you're not paying attention. Didn't care, didn't get it, moved on. Then a couple days later, I sat and actually watched it because everybody under the sun was saying how great it was. And it was. You just have to get into that first couple so you're in and then you're hooked. So after watching, the entire season in a day, I got the book. The first book, it's a series of eight. So if you've watched the show, you know that the Bridgertons are a family with I think eight kids. So there's an eight book series, each one following each kid. Book one um, is called The Duke and I, and it's by Julia Quinn. The book is different than the show. So I watched the show first and I'm visualizing everything from, from what I saw on Netflix. And it's not the same. It's very, very close. The, the show obviously took some you know, creative liberties. The main one being um, the racial distinction. Like the show mainly says things like, the Duke is black and this is the first black queen. And there's that whole like, modern aspect to a story that's set in in the days of yore. The show just brings all that element of old stuff, but modernizes it a bit where you get like the heavy feminism and and the, the, the racism really, like the different races. The book, not like that. It's pretty traditional in the story where, you know, everyone's white. It didn't change anything in terms of the story. It's just when you come to that part, it's like his blue eyes. Like, wait, who are we talking about? On Goodreads, after I read it, I rated it a, I, read, I rated it a four and a half out of five. Quick read, easy. The love story's awesome, steamy, not as 
not as steamy as the show. And I don't think you could just get that on paper. Um, but it was, it, it was. I don't know if I would have felt that way had I not seen the show. Like it still had the whole romance aspect and you know, still steamy. But after watching the show, I think my mind went more that way than the book way. I don't know, but really good, highly recommend. And I super duper can't wait to read the next one. I'm not gonna spoil anything for you because if you have Netflix, you can spoil it for yourself. But like I said, the book is a bit different than the show. Still in January, the last book I read for the month was our Redheads Book Club book. It's called How to Fail at Flirting by Denise Williams. I've already mentioned it before. I am part of a book club. It's part of a podcast that I listen to. So I read along with everyone. And once a month, we listen to our book club podcast. Um, and of all the books that we've read in this podcast, I've loved them all. None have steered me wrong. So if you want to join a book club without having to physically leave your house and see people or talk to people, I suggest um, starting with the Redheads. It's always a great time to join the Redheads. I get so many great recommendations off of that Facebook group. So I recommend the Redheads. So this book was right up my alley. Like I would have chosen this book on my own. Great book. It's what I would call a book rom-com. Um, you get your whole anti-social um, woman stuck in a rut, like she's in her 30s probably is 30, has been in a relationship for years and now she's single and just has to figure it all out again. And you go on that journey with her and it's cute. That's all I can say, it's cute. I would give it a trigger warning. There is um, an abuse aspect to it. Uh, a previous book that I read actually did have a trigger warning as part of the book. Um, this one didn't. So I'm giving you that trigger warning. There's abuse, you've been warned. There is a lot of sex. Um, one of the things that they did say on the book club podcast is it's kind of porny. Um, and it was, I give it a four and a half. Really liked it. I mean, quick read, I got through it quickly. Um, but it's not something that's gonna stay with me forever. Just really light, really fun, really girly. Not for kids, but I recommend it. Now we're into February reads. Okay, so the first book I read for February is called My Favorite Half Night Stand by Christina Lauren. She's the one that, or well, they, I guess it's two people, so I've heard. Anyway, that author is the one who wrote um, In a Holidays, AKA the biggest Christmas holiday book of 2020. So based on some other recommendations, I read another one of her books and this one's good. It actually, and I thought about this while I was listening to the podcast after How to Fail at Flirting. It's kind of the same book. You have an office romance, things go a little haywire. There's this big secret that I haven't talked about. And then, you know, life, life goes on around that. This one now, a lot lighter. It doesn't have the abuse aspect of it. There's still like a dark element with like self-esteem issues and those kind of things. Very 21st century though, like they're on dating apps and swiping left and all that stuff. Um, but it was fun, but it was just, it's really funny that I chose to read that one after the previous book because they were very, very similar. So synopsis with that, there's a girl, her, she's kind of um, not really a loner. She just doesn't have a lot of friends. She has her core group of friends and then just acquaintances. And her core group of friends are some guys and they all work together at a university. Similar to the previous book where she is a professor. So they kind of get into this pact where we have an event coming up, we need dates. Let's go online and go on some online dating site. What else happens in the synopsis that I can say that doesn't spoil the book? So they all go in, they make their separate dating profiles and on the same website and how about her? We'll see who we get. She set up two, one that was her real one and then one that she could be her real self, like her fake one. The whole title comes from my favorite half night stand. Apparently a half night stand is someone who you have a one night stand with, but you leave halfway through the night. I guess I'm too old for these terms. Anyways, good book. I rated it a four out of five. It's all right. I think they fall into that more like rom-com, chick flick kind of book genre. 
whatever the book equivalent of those would be. Um, so if that's not your if that's not your jam, you might not like it, but I thought it was good. The next book I read is the only physical book I bought, and it's called The Wrong Family by Karen Fisher. Now, this book, long awaited, much anticipated, because Taryn Fisher wrote The Wives. I read The Wives last year. The book was wild, psychological thriller, so good. I mean, at the same time, I read like five of the same book, so I can't really pinpoint like which one's Last Mrs. Parrish, the, the Other Wife, The Wives. They're all kind of the same story, just a little bit different. But either way, they're all good. Like it's, I never put any of those down. I finished all of them. Bring us to this new book. Everyone was just looking forward to it. You know, the follow up to the wives. I had high hopes. We got the book and I didn't get it. I will read the synopsis to you because I, in my opinion, this is where everything just went wrong. Have you ever been wrong about someone? Juno was wrong about Winnie Crouch. Before moving in with the Crouch family, Juno thought Winnie and her husband, Nigel, had the perfect marriage, the perfect son, the perfect life. Only now she's living in their beautiful house and sees the cracks in the crumbling facade are too deep to ignore. Still, she isn't one to judge. After her grim diagnosis, the retired therapist simply wants a place to live out the rest of her days in peace. But that peace is shattered the day Juno overhears a chilling conversation between Winnie and Nigel. She shouldn't get involved. She really shouldn't. But this could be her chance to make a few things right. Because if you thought Juno didn't have a secret of her own, then you're wrong about her too. Okay. That synopsis doesn't sound that bad. That synopsis sounds like a book I want to read. The book I read was not as good as that synopsis. You know when you see, you see a trailer for a movie and it looks like it's going to be so good and then you realize that those are the only funny parts and then the rest of the movie just sucks? That was this book. All these writers, these women who write these psychological thrillers, you get to the twist. And then when you get to the twist, you're like, oh, I gotta keep reading. And then you get to another twist. And then at the end of the book, you get the biggest twist of all. These twists all sucked. All of them. Nothing made me jump out of my seat. Nothing made me wanna keep reading. There was many a time I wanted to put down the book, but I refused to because I did not wanna put it on my DNR list. I don't recommend it. If you wanna read a Taryn Fisher book, read The Wives. If you want to read a psychological thriller, there's five or six other stories that are similar to The Wives. This ain't it, sis. This ain't it. Maybe if The Wives wasn't such a big success or if there wasn't so much hype, it would have been better, but it just wasn't good. It wasn't good at all. I think I gave it a two. Um, I'll give it a 2.5 just because I feel bad. Like it wasn't the worst book I've ever read, but the day I finished that book, I sold it. I don't want to read it ever again. If you want to read a book by Taryn Fisher, read The Wives. Um, the next book I read was The Tattooist of Auschwitz by Heather Morris. It's a popular book. I've had it on my to read list for a couple years now. Um, and actually some friends of mine who don't read a lot, liked this one. So it came on good recommendations. I actually like a really good historical fiction, but this is nonfiction. So that's always cool. It is the story of the life of the Tattooist of Auschwitz, um, Lael Skokolov. I'm not good at names. Um, and he's a Slovakian Jew and it's just his experiences in um, the concentration camp and working there and meeting his wife and Good book. A lot of people on the reviews say it's not great because it's really dialogue heavy, but I mean, it's World War, II. World War II. It's heavy regardless. And it really is a story about Lael. It's his experiences and who he met, who he talked to, what he went through. So the story, it was really intriguing. I think I read it in maybe two days. It had a love story and who doesn't love a love story? So not only did it have a love story, but it's real and it's true. I recommend it. Three and a half out of five rave reviews. Everybody likes it. People probably would rate it higher than me, but I rec recommend it and you should read it too. And the last book that I read so far was our second Redheads book of the month. And it's called The Four Winds by Chris and Hannah. Historical fiction based in the 1930s Great Depression era. This one's weird. It's slow, but when it starts to get too slow, something happens and then you just want to keep reading. But it was good. I gave it a four to five and 
I would recommend it. This book, I believe it came out this year. You have a woman who doesn't think she's strong, like she's been torn down, her self-esteem has been torn down by her, her family and her parents. She didn't think she could be loved. And then she gets herself in a situation, she has to deal with it. And it's their story through pre-depression and she lived a, a towny, I guess, society life. And then she moves to a farm and has to learn how to do farm life to be accepted by who she, this new family that she's into. And then the depression happens and like everything dies, like aside from just the money aspect of it, like the actual farm dies and they have nothing. And they leave and they go to California for a better life, but that's not great either because the depression. Um, and I think that's just really relatable. Um, as a mom, a lot of people act stronger than they want to um, for other people and for their kids. And so that's her. Um, I, I get it. There's sometimes that you just want to cry and scream, but it's like, no, I'm a mom. I have to do this for them. It's in three parts or four, three or four parts. And after she becomes a mom and has kids, you see it from her perspective some parts and from her daughter's perspective at some points. And it's really good. That's all I can say. I recommend it. It's the Redheads Book Club. They have not released the podcast on this one yet. This one's going to come out the first Thursday of March. So that is Dev's Bookshelf. Um, these are the books that I've read so far for January and February. I actually hope that this year I read more books that are out of my book comfort zone that I don't think I would want to read. So if you have recommendations of your favorite book, put them in the comments or let me know on um, my bookstagram account because I definitely want to read more. But I hope you liked this video. I can't wait to see your book recommendations and I can't wait to tell you more of what I'm reading on Dev's Bookshelf. Please give me a follow on Instagram on my bookstagram account and also like and subscribe to this video and share it with your friends because I want to hear everyone's book recommendations because um, just who doesn't like reading? But I'm going to get to more reading and I'll see you in the next video.